Tony Jacklin, one of the game's legends, two-time major winner, three-time winning Ryder Cup captain. What? Uh, how come? Uh, uh, how come the U.S. can't win a Ryder Cup, Tony? Well, uh, With all that talent. Well, they've got a lot see? of talent. And there's, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure the, the same hungers there, Jeff. Uh, I was, I've done a couple of interviews today and referenced Ryder Cup, and I can only tell you, going back, um, well, '67 was the first year I played, and um, I played seven times as a, as a player, and it was a, we, we were underdogs, the, the British and Irish at the time, and until Jack wrote the letter and got Europe involved, and even the first two European matches. We didn't change things very much. I got the opportunity to to come on as captain in '83 and and change some of the things that I thought were important. But ultimately, Seve and myself, when we were playing the tour over here, we had an attitude that just because America's got everything, if this makes any sense now to you, I can assure you it, it does to all the Europeans. Just because America's got everything under one roof, if you like, doesn't mean to say they're better than us. Right. And this is the Europe, every European player has had to struggle for his, what he's got. You know, right. I'm not saying the Americans don't uh, for a minute, but it's just a bit more difficult for, for the Europeans. And this is where this team unity comes. They've got this team unity. They've got all this in common with each other. Right. All the Europeans, and this is why they come together and gel well together. Now, on the other side of it, you've got a lot of very, very talented players who are very, very wealthy. And does it really matter whether they win or whether they lose? Uh, is the passion as great on the American side to win as it is on the European side to win? Well, you I personally don't think so. Okay. Uh, but having lost seven of the last nine, I believe is what the count is. Is that what it is? I Something think. Something like that. You know, far off. Shouldn't they have a little motivation there to get off the turf? Well, and fight back? yeah. I mean, obviously they should. Yeah, and and but it all comes down to passion and team unity. And maybe Tom Watson can, uh, you know, as as a as a senior figure and and somebody that's but had more experience than most of, right. of, of his, his, his team members uh, can, can stir some emotion there. Um, Did you like that pick of Watson? I, I, think it, I, I think it was a good pick. I mean, Tom's, Tom's uh, you know, obviously a good guy and he's not afraid to say what he thinks. Right. And I think that's what it's going to take, you know. Uh, He'll be I, more coach than buddy, I think. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Will you and, coach your buddy or both? I tried to be. I didn't coach. I mean, I, they know how to play golf. I mean, yeah. as far as that goes. But I was I was passionate about winning and trying to win. And I wrapped them all in cotton wool and mar uh, and massaged their egos for a week. It, it you know, and uh, and it worked. So uh, I think Tom will be doing a bit of that. I think the weather's going to be a bit of a factor. That could be the unknown. You right. know, Glen Eagles in, in late, late September. September. <laughs> uh, we could be fighting gales, you never know, you know. I mean, uh, but I think, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we might be overlooking. It could be another sort of Welsh job, weather-wise. Uh, one of the things you're known for in the Ryder Cup is Jack Nicholas conceded a putt to you. Put us in the year, the place, how long the putt was, and what it meant, and yeah. what it means now. Yeah, well... Um, it was 1969, Ryder Cup, Royal Birkdale, uh, first tie in Ryder Cup history, and, and Jack Gate conceded a 20, 20 inch to two feet, that's his reckoning, not mine, the greens weren't maybe quite as good as they are these days, but uh, for, that, for that tie to exist, and that was referred to as the concession, and... Um, well, it was, uh, it was in the early part of what's been a 47 or 8 year friendship with Jack and uh, when he did it he said I don't think you would have missed the putt but I would never give you the opportunity in these circumstances which was uh, so it's looked back on, on as one of the great sporting well, gestures in, in any sport. What did the players on both teams think and how did the press handle that back in 69? Well, I'm not sure Sam Snead, who was the American captain, was too thrilled, but Jack told me he never, he never went up and said anything to Jack personally. Uh, Sam 
supposedly said to some of the people, you know, we didn't come over here to be good old boys or words to that effect. But uh, no, Jack saw the big picture. I mean, I'd won the Open a couple of weeks, bef uh, a couple of months before, and uh, you know, I was at the top of my game, and I, I, I think I would have made it. I'll never know. I mean, was I relieved not to have to put it? Absolutely. Uh, it was a it was a great moment in my life. We built a golf course in Southwest right. Florida to Concession. memorialize it. Yep. Yeah, and it turned Are out you known nice. More for uh, uh, winning the two uh, opens that you won, the U.S. Open and the Open Championship, or as the Ryder Cup captain, or for that concession thing. What do you? What do? You, how do? How do people? Uh, most recognize you by? Well, I think... Or all things rolled in as a yeah, Hall of Fame career? I, yeah, it's difficult. I think the Ryder Cup has become such an enormous uh, event now. I mean, I look back to the my early participation and the first Ryder Cup I went to in 1957 as, with my father as a boy. And it was a sort of garden party atmosphere, if you like. And yeah. now... It's turned into one of the biggest team events on the planet. And uh, so a lot of people read about that history and they, they associate me with, you know, some of the changes that, that happened in Ryder Cup. Uh, but, uh, and I'm proud of, of all of that, but uh, my major championship wins, I'm also most proud of when I was a young man, I, I was determined to make, um, a niche for myself in the business of golf, and I knew major championships right. were were the most important, and uh, I wouldn't give those up for for all the world. When you won the U.S. Open at Hazeltine, the runner-up got as much or more attention as you, <laughs> Dave Hill. They ruined a good farm. All this place misses us, what cows and chickens and whatever. How did how did you uh, uh, take that back then, and did you feel overshadowed? I know no, you got the trophy in the check. But. Yeah, I think uh, I got the trophy in the check, and Dave got a lot of the publicity. But I went there to do to, to do something. I didn't want my job to complain about the course we were playing. I, I achieved my goal. I won by seven shots, and uh, I increased my lead every day. It was the best week of golf I ever had in my life, and uh, I think there was an element of shock uh, from a lot of the press corps, you know, the uh, foreign players. We were referred to then uh, uh, coming over here and winning Euro Open by that many. I don't think they wanted to publicize that very much, uh, uh, the American press anyway. But, uh, and of course, in those days, it, it's ironic to, 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 to look back, but there was literally one press guy from Britain. That's it? Here, Ben Wright. And he missed me playing the 10th hole every day because he was phoning his story in, uh, you know, because of the time change and everything. And uh, dear old Ben's still knocking on up there in North Carolina somewhere. Yeah. And he was the only press guy there. So uh, the wow. world's changed a lot yeah. since then. One last thing. Mo Norman, this guy behind us. This is a painting of Mo Norman. Uh, I don't know what kind of art this is. Did you ever see him hit a golf ball? Oh, yeah. I saw Mo. Yeah. I never played with him, but I watched and, him hit. Okay. Him. Were you fascinated by it? How good of a ball striker was he, and, and what do you think of this swing? Well, he was he was fascinating. He, he had this uh, like kind of autism thing, didn't he? He used yeah. to repeat everything. He yeah. used to repeat everything. And, the, and, and that's why his focus was unbelievable. He could hit these shots like they were going down a tube, you know. Yeah. But he, he never did play. I never played or saw him play in a tournament right. where, you know, he couldn't get his mind around the the vagaries of tournament golf i don't think uh, right. quite so well but as a ball striker he, he stood alone i mean uh, he was a, a total exception and a, and a real character uh, towards the end of his life i met him a few times all right tony thank you very much jeff good nice luck. to be with yeah, you always to be good with you. thank you